Fellas. What's got going on? 1960 Jeep Willys. Why do we have this really good looking truck? What are we about to do to it? Yeah. <laughs> we're about to have some fun. Uh -oh. you know, we're all going to be tested on this one right here. The owner of this truck, he wants that bulldog look. He wants something low and just mean looking. Okay. We're going to split this truck down the middle. Oh. So we're not only going to do that, we're going to split it down the middle here, too, and make the cab wider. Cut it in fours. We're going to quarter it. <laughs> oh, man. Drop. It's going to look like a birthday cake all cut up after <laughs> we're done with this. That's a lot of stuff to do. It is. To do it's that. not just the cab. I yeah. mean, you're looking at dash, hood, grill, course support, everything. 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 Right? Everything. You got a lot of work ahead of you, buddy. <laughs> a lot, a lot of work. Yeah. You know, a little bit of the sheet metal we're going to use. Mm -hmm. The rest of the truck is going to be 100% brand new. My parts list is going to be wider than this truck. What are we going to use for go fast? I'm thinking a Hellcat engine. I'm about that. New chassis, coilovers, big axles, six-speed transmission, and a crazy transfer case to be able to distribute all that power out to the brand new axles. Yeah. This is going to ride really good, handle like a race car, and look cool. And, you know, if we're going to build the bed anyway, we might as well build it to the body shape to give it that more modern look. So it still replicates the, the wheel well nice. opening in the front. Right. Gives that little lip, gets it that depth on the bed, and really makes it look modern. Man, I'm super excited. Splitting a, a cab like this, well, quartering it, I'm so excited to jump it's, into this. You know, a lot of work. So I'm, I'm probably going to get, you know, Bob Grant to come in and help us out with this. Nice. He is the man when it comes to any kind of sheet metal work. So yeah. we can use our expertise in other areas while he's tackling the cab and a couple other things to really, really help out. But you're not getting off easy. Oh, I'm not getting right. off easy. I mean, nobody <laughs> here, oh. nobody here is going to get off easy on this project. This is why we get up and go to work, right? You're all right. right. You are Speaking right. Speaking of, let me get up. Let's, let's go, go do go that. To work. <laughs> first things first, Tim and John are going to tear it down. We can't be sure what parts we may need till after the cutting. So we'll be saving as many of the parts and pieces we can for later. Oh, check that out. Automatic hood prop. That's why the engineers got paid big dollars in the day. They get a whole dollar fifty extra. <laughs> Just like any car in the 60s, haven't been taken apart in a while, the bolts are probably rusted together. Go ahead. You know, we've been doing this long enough that the Jeep could look really nice on the outside. As soon as we get tearing into this paint, it could be really torn up. Get all this taken out, put it all in a crate, send it to Sandblast. So we just rolled a car underneath it. We're gonna make some stands for the cart. You only knew how many cars and trucks have been on this cart. A lot. All right, now we got it on the cart. Now we can roll it back this way. We'll pull all the chrome off, pull all the windows out, pull everything out of the interior. You know, this is just one more fact how much simpler it was back in the day. Nowadays, if you took the dash out, you'd have 500 feet of wiring and sensors and all that stuff. This is as simple as it gets, but as you can see, 60 years later, it's still functioning and it still works. Now we have all the windows out, all the trim off. Now this thing's ready to get blasted. Next time we see it, it'll be fresh metal to metal. We can do all of our metal work without any body work, any body filler, or any surprises. The 1960s Willie G pickup is back from blast. You definitely want the steel to be as good a shape as possible before you cut it. And it looks better than I hoped. This thing's in really good shape, man. A little bit damaged, but that's nothing for the age of it. I'd like to look this good when I'm 60, but I look worse than that now. When you even start to think about cutting a truck into quarters, there's a hundred, maybe even a thousand ways it could go wrong. 
You know, there's only a few people I can trust with that level of metalwork. Bob Grant is definitely at the top of that list. Robert, what's up, man? Man, I haven't seen you in a while. How you doing? It's been way, way, way too long, way man. Way too long, man. So what you got planned for me? The owner wants just that bulldog look when he's coming down the road at you. Okay. And that's what this is. It. Right? Well, it's like your grandpa's old farm truck. Right, exactly. What I want to do with this is just cut it down the middle and make it wider. Yeah. If we're going to do that, we might as well cut it down the back also and give him a little bit more foot room. Damn. Right? Both ways? <laughs> right. Holy crap. That's a lot of work. <laughs> yeah, it's a little bit nothing for you and yeah. your father. If there's anybody I'm going to call in to do some badass metal work, it's Thank you. you, man. Appreciate it. Hell yeah. I've worked with them before and hung out with them at numerous car shows. It's just an awesome dude. So what kind of measurements you got for me? Something man, radical? You know, or? something like this, I'm thinking probably eight inches in the back and maybe, you know, six in the front. So it doesn't look so exaggerated. Oh, yeah, it don't look like you did it. I think that's the true definition of custom is you know something's different, but you don't really know what it is. We'll have it done in a day or two, huh? <laughs> right. I got you all set up. I got, you know, my cart for you. I mean, my shop's your shop. Okay. You ready? I'm ready. Yep, I'll break some <laughs> I'm going to make some reference points to uh, run my tape lines because tape works really good. It, it makes nice straight lines if you stretch it, and uh, it's easier than using a ruler on the whole damn thing. Every tape line we see here is going to be somewhere where we're doing a cut. You got to kind of eyeball it to get your lines nice and straight. But if we keep the line really straight, it'll be easy to build off of. This grill area, we're actually going to cut it out right here cut out this whole piece and we're gonna make a new one then we're gonna stand back and look at it and put the headlight where it looks the best side to side and it won't look like we did any work to it it'll just look normal Buddy. What up, fellas? Oh, Got you one from Moscow. That's a long, long way. journey, huh? Long journey, man. Yes, sir. Right out of Port of Houston. Crazy, yeah. crazy, Russia. crazy. You know, getting a G-Wagon in the shop to work on is pretty cool, but getting a G-Wagon from halfway across the world, that's really cool. Man, this is our first G-Wagon. I mean, this isn't something that normally comes down Sunny Drive for us to, to tackle. Interior, right? Yeah, I talked to him. I said, man, uh, there's, there's probably a couple shops, you know, between me and you that would Probably knocked that out really well, and he, he wasn't having it. He said, no, if the extensive's gonna do it, I'm gonna put it on a boat, and I'm gonna send it to you. We must be doing something right. That's for sure. Max, what year is this? Uh, 98 AMG G-Wagon. You never know what year these are. I mean, they pretty much all look the same, different headlights and tail lights, basically. Yeah, they're still big squares. Yeah. You know, I don't know what it is about the G-Wagon. Either you love it or hate it, it's an iconic body style. 